Where do you even begin documenting the journey that this group has traveled, this particular label? But let's try to do exactly that. Bring in our next guest. He's one of the founding members of Galar Jasmine. His formal name is Oscar Mjongwa, but of course he's known to you and me as DJ Oskido, who joins us now via our video link. It's great to see you, sir. Thanks very much indeed for making time. And yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> where do we begin, right? Because my understanding is that Galawa and Jasmine were two separate entities. In fact, you're being described as sworn enemies before your formation in 1994. Why tell the story now? <laughs> well, I think it's very important for us to always document our stories. I think as Africans, I think we, we're not documenting our stories. I mean, I always make reference of Ushaga Zulu that, you know, I don't really have a clear picture of Ushaga Zulu unless if we think of Ubabu Utele, you mm. know, we always think that's Shaga Zulu. So it's always very important for us now to document our stories so that the future generations can understand where it all began. Yeah, and let's speak about that, you know, because you really are spoiled for choice about where to start with the story. Some people argue it started, as I mentioned, as two separate entities, these groups that are really vying to make a difference. Other people suggest that it starts in 1994 when there was a, de a decision to have this kind of merger. Uh, yeah, well, I think that uh, it's very important for people to watch the docu, which is premiering uh, uh, tomorrow night, for them to really understand in depth what really happened. And, I mean, a lot of things were happening. You're right, 1994, 1993, a lot of things were happening in the country politically. You know, yeah. we're going through a transformation. And also as the youth culture of that time, we said, you know, we're tired of uh, these political songs. We want to be creatives and make people dance and enjoy themselves. And boy, have you done that throughout the years. How much of this Ducky <laughs> series reveals some of your secrets? Because it feels like you've got the winning formula. Yeah, well, I always tell people that, you know, uh, it's always important to work with faith because, I mean, we're doing, you know, that, those days things were so dangerous. You know, there were so many people with guns and all that stuff. There were so many conflicts. But, you know, through uh, walking through uh, with faith, you know, God made us to survive. And this became one of the things which really transformed our music industry and uh, made us to be, uh, you know, to to understand what our economic freedom is as uh, creatives. So therefore, that was the fight of ownership, of saying that we're going to start from the ground, we're going to own this uh, you know, music industry and make sure that we transform it ourselves. Because most of the industry, they always talk about transformation, but no one takes the task to say, you know, let's do it. So we took it upon our hands to say that, you know what, we're going to say, Majors, we're going to be bigger than the major record labels. We're going to have 80% instead of you giving us 20%. So that's why how we've transformed this. And you can see the fruits of what's happening right now in the music industry. When you see how uh, Kwaito has transformed into a piano, and now mm. it has become a worldwide phenomenon. And you can definitely feel the footprint of the work that you guys started to do, even the music that's being released today. And when we think about the fruits of your labor, I mean, there's Boom Shaga, Mafigi Zolo, Pongo Mafan, Professor uh -huh. Uhuru, Zonke, DJ Zinte, Black Motion, the list really does go on and on. To what extent is the voice of these artists also included in this docuseries? Did you get an opportunity to do any of that? Yeah, yeah, we did. I mean, we start from the ground, uh, the doc, to say this is how we started as Kalawa. You know, Kalawa, myself, uh, DJ Christos, we don't like her. Uh, if you take KA, it's Kai Katz, this is Christos, Senem, LA, but don't like her, Senem, WA, Mlongwa. That's how Kalawa started. Wow. And on the other side, with the other camp, Jasmine, which was uh, Jairos Mahut, Amanda, and them, uh, uh, the Trumpist guys, they call themselves Jasmine, and it was through this song, which I had uh, lyrically written, you know, uh, I call Ibi Zemoyen, you know. Then from there, two songs came out, and from there, we started fighting for that. And later, you know, we just said, let's smoke the peace pipe and match uh, together. And so for me, it's very important that it's a story which shows that you can be enemies, but you have to, form, uh, you have to find uh, common ground for us to move forward as a society. Without this as part of our discussion already. I, I imagine it's difficult to tell the Galawa Jasmine story without telling the story of South Africa's own history because so much of your music is embedded in the time in which that music was made. 
Yeah, our story, it is the South African, uh, you know, a story of how Kwaito started, you know, the youth culture of that movement. Remember that it was a culture which a lot of journalists were writing it off, saying that, you know, the music doesn't make sense, you know, we're making a lot of noise, we're not getting any radio airplay. But that music emerged, it became the powerhouse, you know. We started, like, uh, creating our own concert. We started creating our, eco our economy. So, therefore, Kwaito became an economic freedom for all of us, you know, young people. We're not out there to do crime and all that, but we're being creative. So it shows that this is the power of what culture can do. And this thing has got nothing amatenda. You know, in the music industry, you start from <laughs> scratch, you become what you are. You're not given with A hey, for it, A is the tender. Yeah, no. Yeah. It's how you create and how people are going to love it. And later, I mean, it employed, you know, we employed a lot of people. Sure. I mean, if you can check... Uh, you know, now dancers were employed. You could, you know, we could be able to feed our families through this music, through the culture. So this sure. story is talking about that. Absolutely, and we look forward to it. It premieres once again on Amzanti Magic tomorrow. DJ Oskido, producer and musician, thanks very much indeed for.